love the latter part. Thank you for that water, my brother. I love the latter part of that scripture there. I'm the least in my father's house, and the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. And thou hast will smite the media. Medianites is one man. You know, there's 120,000, 135,000 Medianites, something like that. Uh, and, and he told Gideon, I'm going to lead you to defeat them. And Gideon said, wait a minute, man. I, I, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I mean, uh, my family is nobody. Not only that, I'm the least in my family. Let me tell you something. Satan knows who we are. Jesus Christ knows who we are. Right. And I'm going to tell you, God told this man right here, I know who I'm dealing with, and I want to use you. I want to use you. That You'll be the vessel to allow me to use you, then I'll use you. But if you want, I'm not going to use you. And that goes for everybody under the sound of my voice. <laughs> Let me tell you something. God wants to use us. By the way, Gideon in here, he wasn't up on a threshing floor. That's on the very top, okay? That's where the top-notch folks was. Uh, he was in the bottom, the wine press. He was down there hiding. I don't care who you are, where you come from. I don't care what you've done prior of today. It doesn't make any difference. Listen, I'm a testimony right now. I could go back to my horrible life and talk about it, but I'm not. I know where I came from. And son, when I got into this thing, I was just glad I was into this thing. But to realize that God spoke to me through his word and says, I want to use you for my glory, not for your glory, Rob Hicks, but for my glory. I said, oh God, you can't use me. Look at all the baggage. Look at all the scars. Look at who I am. Dirty, filthy nonsense in my life. God said shut up, touched you. You're clean. I can't even remember that. I put it out of my mind. Now let's go and do something for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. God is so good. I want you to ask yourself this morning, do you want to be used of God? Oh, in my early Christian life, I've been saved now for 28 years. I, I just weep and cry and I say I want to be used of God. I don't want to be average. I don't want to just be hanging around a church. I don't want to be showing up because, oh, it's a good thing to do and go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. I don't want to be one of these Christians that are on their face. They look like they're in bondage. It's so sad. Man, if I look like I'm in bondage, somebody slap me and wake me up, man. I'm having a time of my life. I love, I put my hands on the Bible. I love being a born-again Christian. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Do you want God to use you? Huh? How do you think it's going to be when you leave this world? You just wasted your time. The Holy Spirit's always saying, I got something to do for you personally. Everybody in here personally, and it's different across this crowd. Don't let some man stand up here and say, oh, it's, it's, it's the same now. I'm going to tell you, the fundamentals are the same, and that's to get the gospel out. That's the same. That's for everybody, amen. Getting right. baptized, that's the same. That's just a commandment of God. But the will of God for your personal life, it will vary across this room. Amen. Right. Gideon, just a farmer, leasing the tribe of Israel, leasing his father's house. The Bible said in Judges chapter 6 and verse 34, but the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. You know what? God uses common people. Just right. common people. Yes, Boy, I'm going to tell you, he loves to use common people. Why? Because it just magnifies his glory. <laughs> Man, he don't want to get somebody that stands up here like a, like a proud peacock and arrogant. And, right. and for God instilled in that person's voice just the most unbelievable voice. And then they get proud about it. Then they get arrogant about it. Oh, so I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me sing. Oh, no. God wants the people to stand up here and maybe can't even sing. But out of their heart, they sing praises and glory to honor. That's where God is using people and he uses Amen. a common man. First Corinthians, you not need to turn there for the sake of time. I'll just read the word of God. First Corinthians 1 and 26, for ye see your calling, brethren, have that not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many mo noble are called. But God have chosen the foolishness things of this world to confound the wise. And God have chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. You see, I'm not getting up here and just trying to prove the Bible, son. I'm letting the Bible prove me. I'm just telling you what the Word said. Amen. God wants to get the glory. Exodus 35, 30 in the Bible said, And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uriah, the son of Hur, and the tribe of Judah, and have 
filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works and to work in gold and silver and brass. You listen to me. You men that put your hand to the plow out here and you nail up a two by four somewhere, or maybe you hang some scaffold, or maybe you're a welder, or maybe you're a contractor. I don't care who you are. You're a common man. And that man right there, the Bible said, was filled with the Spirit. They was building, man, the Ark of the Covenant. They was building the things of God. And God touched that man because he took seriously his calling. Amen. 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 Exodus 36, 2, And Moses called Bezalel and the holy Ab, an ever wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, and ever one whose heart stirred him up to come to the work to do it. God loves to use the blue-collared man and lady. You want to be used of God? Then get the idols out of your life. God's not going to use us with idols in a life. What's an idol? That's anything that stands between you and Christ. It doesn't matter what it is. It might be a cell phone. Eh? It might be an MP3 player. It might be a video game. Sir, it might be your job. It might be your hobby. I can go on and on and on, but right now you know what it might be. It might not be doing it to you, but you know what has the possibility to do that, and it tips you all the time. But thank God that you're here this morning because it didn't win, amen. What stands between you and going to church? What stands between you and telling somebody about Jesus? What stands between you and reading the Word of God? What stands between you and praying to, to the God of heavens? What does that? It's an idol in your life, and it's an idol in my life. And we let those idols come in. God cannot use us, friend. That's right. Amen. Amen. Judges 6, 25, And it came to pass in the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullet, even the second bullet of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal. That there's, listen, that thy father hath. Don't miss that. I missed that several times reading the Bible. That thy father had, and cut down the grove that is by. Build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of the rock in the older place, and take the second bullet and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou hast cut down. This was his father's place. Even his father had false idols. Right. Let me tell you something. It's one thing to go across town where nobody knows you, huh? And start preaching and lifting up Christ. But what about right around your family where others might be against you, huh? When others might be against your convictions that come from the Bible here. When your own family don't understand it, huh? Let me tell you something. There's no reason for any of us to be uh, 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 arrogant. There's no reason for any of us to be unkind to our family member. If they don't believe the way we dress, what we watch, what we don't watch, what we listen to, what we don't listen to, if it offends them, we should not offend them. But bless God, it shouldn't offend us. And the verse to stand true no matter what, we can stand true to what we believe and love our family. And that's what he did. He's loved his dad. He loved his family. But he said, God's more important. I'm tearing down all these idols and I'm going to serve the living God. I've got to call on him. I need him. I need to be used. Amen. How bad do you want to be used? Get the idols out of our life. Move on and serve Jesus. Are we clean this morning? The Bible said in Isaiah 52, 11, be clean that you bear the vessel of the Lord. Is Jesus Christ number one in your life this morning? If not, we have idols. Amen. Right. Number three, God uses people with courage. Courage. He said, thou mighty man of valor. He hadn't done anything, but he had it in his heart. He knew he hadn't done anything, but he had it in his heart. And the Holy Spirit drew it out, brother. He reached in there and drew it out. I, I, I'm going to tell you, I was scared to death about anything. You'd ask me to teach Sunday school. If you asked me, son, I'd have a heart attack and a stroke and died right then and went to heaven, boy. But I'm going to tell you something. A Holy Ghost reached down in my heart when I was in a camp meeting in Monroe, North Carolina at Brother Bobby Leonard's, a little old young preacher that pastored in Jacksonville, Florida and was preaching. I don't even know who he is today, a black-haired preacher. But I said to myself, when I, a quarter of a century, I'm going to look that man up and I'm going to thank him for preaching that message. He doesn't have a clue who I am. He doesn't have a clue I'm probably called to preach. But to God use that 29 year old man to preach a message that the Holy Spirit grabbed my heart and called me into the ministry. Amen. And I said, okay God, I ain't got nothing to give, but I'm going to give you everything I got. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Judges 7 verse 2, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand. Lest Israel vault themselves against me, saith mine own hand have saved me. You heard what I said about the singing a while ago? Proud peacock, he didn't want this in this battle. He said, if I send all you, if I send all you 35,000, if I send y'all, y'all going to get proud, and y'all going to get arrogant, and you're going to get right. cocky. Uh-uh. Right. This is me. This is me that's going to get the glory here. Amen. Now, therefore, go proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from the Mount Gilead. And there returned the people 20 and 2,000, and there remained 10,000. Now, wait a minute. All of us standing out there on the hillside, we're getting ready to, and our, our General Gideon down there is getting ready to put the army together. We got 120, 135,000 Midianites ready to whoop up on us, and all of a sudden we got uh, 34, 35,000, whatever it is. Don't trust my memory. I have to go back to the Word of God, but it's a lot, okay? But not a lot to 120,000. But then Gideon says, hey, if any of y'all scared, go on back to the house. I'm like, if I was out there, I'd say, hang on, get it. Let, let me talk to him just a minute. I, I, I get him riled up, amen. I give him a little prep, prep speech, you know. We got to do this, boys. Uh, Gideon says, no. You got any fear in your feet whatsoever? Go on back to the house. Now, son, you standing between life and death. How many of them rascals you think going back to the house? Well, 22,000 of them went back to the house, all right? So, so now we had 32,000, and now we got 10,000. And so them boys looking around at each other like, what in the world just happened? Yeah. Well, fear is contagious, friend. Right, right. Fear is contagious. Yes, that means if the Lord wouldn't have said anything to Gideon and he took them into the battle, and what happens is that fear, it's just like a virus right there. They're getting ready to fight and these other guys are coming all to pieces, man. Right. And then all of a sudden it bleeds over into the guys that didn't have any fear. And before you know it, it takes over your whole army. And before you know it, you're destroyed. And God's not going to stand for that. So God said, let them get out of there. I'm going to give the power and the leadership to the ones that's not fearful. Amen. Amen. Because fear is contagious. Sir, you want to bring fear to your wife, then you get fearful. Huh? Ma'am, if you want to bring fear to your husband when well, you're not in the house of God anymore, then you get fearful. Huh? It's contagious. Right. Deuteronomy 28, the Bible said, And the officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful, faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. Right. It's contagious. Right. Having courage doesn't mean you don't get scared. Son, if we're honest, all of us get scared sometimes. Yes, but having courage is when you cover it up and you go on and do what's right. Yes. And you used to do what's yes. right regardless of the situation. Yes, sir. You think about Daniel in the den of lions. A lot of people say the line of dens, a den of lions. We see if it's a if a lion's den, it actually, it don't mean that there was any lions in there because it could have all been gone, you know, and he'd right. just been down there hanging out, you know. No, he said, the Bible said the den of lions. That means there was lions right. in the den, okay? Yeah. They were there. You tell me that rascal wasn't scared? Man, I guarantee you, when we testify, we'll get to heaven. I want to hear Daniel's testimony. And son, them jokers down there, when your son got a snarl and no teeth shining and everything, they're popping out, them, them claws and all. Huh? Terrified. Yes, sir. But he did what was right. Amen. And God protected him. David face to face with that giant nine, ten foot, whatever he was. I don't know. I wasn't there. I know he was big. Amen. Uh, I guarantee you he was scared to death. Uh, a little old uh, wormy, uh, uh, hupper, teenager boy. You know, that chest looked like a bird cage. you know. Down there with a cotton picking rock and, and maybe an old a tongue that come out of an old work boot. Amen. Just bent around with a stone in it, slanging it like this right here. You tell me that boy wasn't scared? He was scared to death. But what he done is got past that fear. And he trusted in Jesus Christ. He trusted in God the Father. And he slung that stone. Let me tell you something. God took care of that situation. Amen. Right. Amen. You think about the boys in Vietnam. You don't think they was fearful and 17, 18 years old over there fighting for our country? Son, they grew up real quick and they put that fear behind. Right. Huh? You have courage. You have courage this morning when it comes down to it. I mean, I mean, do you have courage? You want to test to see that if I have any courage. Let me tell you what you do. You threaten my wife. 
You threaten my boys. I'm the nicest person that you ever come around. I wouldn't want to fire anybody in here for nothing at all. But I promise you, I don't care if it's an independent Baptist church. I don't care where we're at. Amen. If you threaten my wife, I go into a whole different spectrum of an individual. Why? Because that's mine. It was given to me. And I'm here to protect that woman. I'm here to protect those boys. I, I turn into somebody that's absolutely fearless if it's going to even cost my life. And that's the way we should be for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He had courage. Number four, if we want to be used of God, we got to be cautious. Using some wisdom in what we do, being cautious. Yes. Bible said in Judges 7, verse 4, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are too many. Here we are again. Bring them down to the water, and I will try them for there. And it shall be, that of whom I say unto thee, thou shalt go down with thee, the same shall go down with thee. And on the whosoever I say unto thee, thou shalt not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought them down to the people of the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that bowed down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their head down to their mouth, putting, putting them in the hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But of the rest that bowed down upon their knees to drink, and the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that have lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites unto thine hand. And let all the other people, every man go to his place. So the people took victuals in the hand and their trumpets, and they sent all the rest of Israel's men back to the tent and remained and retained those 300, and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. So what are we saying? Yet we still got too many. We got 10,000. Lord, you're telling me that's too many? I'm telling you that's too many. I want you to be cautious, boys. I want you to pay attention to what's going on. What does that mean? He took them down to that brook where that water was. He took them down there and said, Hey, all y'all, let's just get a drink of water right here together. Let's just get something. We're, going, we're fixing to go to battle. Let's get a drink of water. Now y'all go ahead and help yourself. So them it got down. Like this, looking at that cool water. And he took, and they drank that water like that. God said, tell them to go home. Tell them to go home. Why? She you put your head down like this right here, friend. What so many Christians are doing today Amen. is Satan walks up behind you and knocks your brains out while you're not looking. Good. Amen. But the other ones kneel down to that water. He was cautious. Right. And he was watching for the enemy no matter where that enemy was at. Amen. God said, those are the boys you want to take with you. Yes, sir. They're not fearful and they're cautious. And I'm going to take care of you, son. And I'm going to get the glory for doing so. Amen. 300 men were very cautious. In 1 Peter 5, 8, the Bible said, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I want you to know, I don't care who you are. You understand, my boys, Satan wants to devour you, and he wants to devour me, and he wants to devour our children, and our future, and the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation. And if you go down there and you put your cotton-picking head down in the water and not paying attention, they're going to knock your brains out and take your family from you. Amen. Luke 21, 36 says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Son, I'm always watching. I'm always paying attention. I don't care where I'm at. I walk in a building like this, a church. I'm looking if it's my choice for a position to where I'm going to be ready if some psycho walks in that door, okay? When I go into a restaurant with my family, if I can choose that seat, and no matter what seat I get, I'm choosing the chair. I'm choosing the chair where I can watch. When I sit down, I've already picked out 
got a weapon somewhere. If some psycho comes up to my table, I've already made a plan to pick up his cotton pick and broom handle and knock his brains out. Amen. You can just say whatever you want to say, but we got to be cautious. We got to be paying attention. You can't fumble around through life. You can't fumble around in regular life. You dead sure can't fumble around in spiritual life or somebody's going to knock your brains out. Amen. Amen. Do you watch? Do you pay attention? You parents, you got to be cautious. Where's your children? I don't know where my kids at all the time. All the time. And if I pick up my phone and they're not right where they're supposed to be, and I have to know that, okay? I have to know that. Then we got a serious situation, all right? Number one, we got broken trust. If you're not where you're supposed to be, how come you didn't tell me where you're not supposed to be? I got to know where my kids are. That's my responsibility, and it's your responsibility. Don't let them make you think you're doing something wrong or, or man, you're prying into their life. No, they are your life. It's your responsibility, and it's my responsibility. You say you can't, you can't raise a great relationship like that. You out of your cotton picking mine. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, I got three boys sitting right over there. I got another one at the house that had autism and all four of them are my best friends. Each one of us has a special relationship. Their all personalities are completely different, but I've trained them all the same. It's been the same standards, the same laws, the same way you live in my house, and I promise you, every one of them is my best friends. Uh, that's why they're here. I didn't make them come. I asked every one of them, Brother Perry, do you want to go down there? I'm not making you go down there. Do you want to go down there. You know why they wanted to go down there? So we could be together. Amen. It's for you to know, parents, Satan's real. Huh? Stay on guard. Watch. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. You want to be used to God? Be confident. Be confident. That sounds bad, don't it? Be confident. No, it's good. Listen, when God's in it, it's good. In Judges 7, verse 12, And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay among the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number. And the sands of the sea sighed for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto the fellow and said, Behold, listen, I can't tell you the whole word of God because it'd take it forever. But Gideon said, I got to know some junk. And so, man, him and, him and another good old boy, good old redneck, snuck down into the camp at night. Hey, man, they're just hanging out down there and checking out things. And, and they're up against a tent. Listen, that's where, they're at, that's where they're at right here, all right? Let me go back and find where I'm supposed to be. And this man said, listen, and the, and the fellow said, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of the mediums. And came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it. That the tent lay alone. And his fellow answered a man of Israel, for unto his hands hath God delivered Midian and all the host. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered unto your hand the host of Midian. He said, Bless God. I'm going to tell you, he done show me right now that we won this war. You talking about being confident? He was confident. Why in the devil do you think that God gave us his book right here and so we can be 100% confident? We might lose a battle here, a battle there, a battle here, a battle there. But bless God, we won the war. We're checking out of here one day. We're going to heaven, and we want to take as many people as we possibly can with us. Amen. It's over, friend. It's there. I've read the first book of the Bible all the way to the last book of the Bible, and we win this cotton-picking war. Amen. So you be confident if you want to be used to God. Amen. Know what the Bible says. Know what God says. Amen. That small, still voice. It's John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. So I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go again, I will return and take you unto myself. It's a promise of God. Amen. A prepared place to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Huh? <clears throat> Amen. Son, I'm, I'm looking for the rapture, man. Not the grave. I'll take the grave. It's all right. But I'm, I'm going to check out of here Amen. in the sky. Amen. Right. You want to be used of God? Really? Do you really want to be used of God? 
than just be a common man, common woman, common teenager, common little kid. Just get the idols out of your life. Quit praying around. Quit messing around. You got a great preacher up here. It tells you the truth. It loves you and proves you. It ain't like you're trying to serve someone with somebody half in and half out. Huh? He's proved that. He stood true long enough. Listen to him. Listen to him preach the Bible and then get real about this thing. I mean, nail it down. Get the idols out of your life and then get some courage. And tell that wife or tell that husband, bless God, we're just going to do right around here. We know it ain't easy. We know the world's against us, but we're just going to do right. Every day we're going to get up and we're going to do right. And if you fail, bless God, you ask for forgiveness that night, but you get right back up. His mercies is new every cotton picking. I'm going to tell you something. You get up and you just keep on going. Don't let Satan beat you down because you're going to fail. I'm going to fail. My kids over there are going to fail. Your kids are going to fail. Your kids are going to upset you and let you down sometimes. You get back up the next morning and you keep on keeping on. Amen. 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 You can be cautious. Be cautious. Pay attention. Don't stick your head down in the sand. Don't stick your head down in the brook and get you a drink of water. Always watch. Always pay attention. Be confident. Knowing that he gave us this wonderful, wonderful book. Amen. We have the truth. It tells us everything. And last, I want you to get some tenacity. You look that word up, tenacity, the definition is a grip. Let me tell you something. When I got saved 28 years ago, first thing my daddy told me is them people down there is going to hurt you, boy. They're going to hurt you. I had no idea he got saved when I, uh, but with the year that I was born and fell out of church the year that I was five. Fell out of there because the church split. That church turned upside down. Satan wants to stick his head in here and split this church. That's right. Huh? Right. Amen. He said he split the church and my father was a good church. Let's roll off preach there from Corpus Christi, Texas, right down the road here. Flies a little old plane, land on that little old raggedy land, uh, 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 airstrip out there, get out. Unbelievable revivals. People were driving over 100 miles. This is no joke. Over 100 miles every Sunday and getting saved. That church literally had the power of God on it in 1969, okay? But Satan wasn't dealing with that. He come in and split that church down the middle. And my daddy was grounded upon personal relationships rather than being grounded on the Word of God. And fell out of church and took a, my mom out of church and took us four children out of church and never to return again. When I got saved 20 years later, I thought the greatest thing they'd want to hear is I was saved because I was a drug addict, a drug dealer, on my way to state penitentiary and all kind of trouble that you could ever imagine. And I walked in the house and said, I got saved. My life has changed. I'm born again. Them people are going to hurt you, boy. Yeah. You see, a lot of people out there want you to get religion because they think it cleans you up a little bit. Right. But they don't want you to get too saved, amen. Right. amen. You just right. plumb too saved, amen. Right. Well, I don't know but one way. And I want to do it the Bible's way. Amen. Amen. And so what I did is made a decision early in my Christian life. I said, every man might be a liar, but my God's not. Amen. And I said, I ain't running around here like most Christians and just trusting the preacher. And I love your preacher and believe in him. But if, you, if that's your Bible right there, you got a, you got a big problem for you. Amen. A big problem. If that's your Bible, you got a big problem. This is a messenger of the Bible. Amen. The one you're looking at is a messenger of the Bible. If you hear Brother Rob Hicks is smoking dope next week, it shouldn't bother you at all. Because bless God, the God of this Bible is perfect. Amen. 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 That's right. And I don't think you are going to hear Brother Robbie's <laughs> But if you did, amen. amen. Tenacity. What am I saying? I'm saying I got a grip on this thing. 28 years ago, I got a grip on it. And guess what? I ain't turned loose yet. God. Don't plan on turning loose. Get a grip on God's Word, huh? Amen. Judges 6 and verse 39. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thy anger be hot against me, and I will speak, but of this once. Let me prove. Listen, listen. We're getting shaky. Some of y'all getting shaky. Some of y'all's gotten shaky. Some of you going to get shaky. All right? You, you're a little fragile in your faith right now. You, you're, a little, you're a little nervous. Uh, that's okay. Look what Gideon did. And all this is going on. He said, I pray thee. But this once. Okay, God, we're just going to do it just this once. <clears throat> and with a fleece... Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon the ground let there be dew. 
And God did so that night. For it was upon dry, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on the ground. You say, wow, that's something. That's kind of that's kind of wrong to do that for Gideon and not do that for us. I mean, really, if, okay, if I'm saved, God, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, put it fleece down on the ground and say in the morning, I need this to be completely dry and all the ground be wet. I mean, that'd be fair, wouldn't it? I mean, come on. I mean, you did it for Gideon. Wouldn't that be right? Well, guess what? Gideon didn't have this. Guess who showed up after Jesus Christ left? The Holy Spirit of God. Read your Bible. He did not have a Bible and he did not have the Holy Spirit of God, okay? So God granted that to him. You and I can't say anything. We have all of that fleece information right here from cover to cover. We have the Holy Ghost of God that is promised to be the greatest teacher of this Bible right here. Uh, don't run out there and challenge God with those little uh, junk like that right there. God's give us everything that we need. Yes, sir. Amen. Satan knew Gideon. Does he know you? Well, I ain't never thought about that. In Acts 19, 13, the Bible says, Then a certain of the vagabond Jews, Exodus, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, saying, We adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Don't forget that statement. The Jesus who Paul preaches. He didn't say, my Jesus. He said, by Jesus who Paul preached. He said, we're going to run you out of here by the Jesus that Paul preached. And there were seven sons of seven. A Jew and a chief of the priest which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, and that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Son, that's some serious business going on right there. So if you run around out here and you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to do something in the Jesus that Brother Perry preaches. That's what I'm going to do. No, if you and I do something in Jesus, it's because it's our Jesus. And Jesus is real to us. And we know Jesus. And if we know Jesus like we know Jesus and ought to know Jesus, then Satan will know us, my friend. I'm going to tell you something. We are no, no, no challenge to Satan whatsoever without Christ. Not right. none. Amen. But we can overbeat anything at all if we go in the name of Jesus Christ. When I step in this pulpit every time, son, I want to knock her off him when I open up the Word of God, man. I want him to go to his little old demon buddies and his little old demon kids and say, oh, give me a whole pack of, of uh, alka sensors. Uh, Rob Hicks is fixing to enter into the pulpit and open up the Word of God and preach the Bible to him. Amen. Amen. Is he your Jesus? He loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. I can preach to an empty crowd with no one in it. I've did it, I don't know how many times I'd go and go to my home church in the wee hours of the night, go up to the pulpit and preach a full-blown message. Why? I've never asked for a congregation. I've never asked a pastor if I'm going to receive an offering. Now, I did start sending the thing saying that you got to get me and my family there and back. So there are some expenses. Bless God, I get down there and get back. I ain't worried about no offering or not. Amen. <laughs> I've never asked, how many do you have in your church in 25 years of ministry? Amen. Why? I know Jesus. Do you know Jesus? I don't need a congregation. I love a congregation and I love you people because I love God's people. But I've preached a many times by myself in an empty auditorium. You say, what were you doing, Brother Rob? I was simply building an intimate relationship with my Savior. That's how, he, that's how important He is in my life. Amen. 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 
You can't get a grip on daddy's Jesus, young kids. You can't get a grip on mama's Jesus or papa's Jesus or mama's Jesus right. or even Paul's Jesus. It has to be your Jesus. Amen. Anybody want to be used of God in this building? Anybody? Amen. Don't be right. used of God? Just be a common person. Just get the idols out of your life. Get some courage. Be cautious. Be confident. And at last, get a grip. Tenacity. Put a clamp on this boot right here. Amen. And never let anything, anybody, take it away from you, my Amen. friend. Every head bowed.